So it turns out that you know you can now plot B versus V. Remember we plotted the solutions for two values of V. We plotted for V equal to 2 and we plotted for V is equal to uh, 6.5. I showed you the plots for two specific values of V. Imagine now you can keep on doing this for a continuum of V values. You keep doing this LHS RHS equation, keep finding out what are the solutions for uh, different possible values of V. Would the B value be the same for the same mode in all the cases? So let us go back and take a look. What I am asking is for the fundamental mode, I got for V equal to 2, I got a certain value of B, which was 0 0.416. When I did this for uh, V equal to 6.5, did I get the same value of B? I got somewhere here, right. So, the B value for the same mode, which means a propagation constant of the same mode is different when your V number is different. Other words of physically saying that is the propagation constant of the mode for a given fiber is different when the wavelength is different. Because wavelength changes, V number changes, propagation constant changes of the mode changes. So, it is not physically hard to imagine that the propagation constant will be different for different V numbers. So, what I am trying to now do is that do these curves for all possible values of V, right. So, I very systematically do it for V is equal to 2, 3, 4 or 2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, etcetera, right, for a large range of values of V. And for a given mode, I keep finding out what is this B, okay, and plot that. So, that is this plot here. This is B as a function of V for a given mode plotted. This is not to scale, this I have just shown the nature of variation. Uh, the previous ones were actually calculated, this one is not actually calculated, there is a lot of work to actually calculate it, because you have to find out all the points of intersection for different values of V and then extract what are the points of intersection for the fundamental mode which is closest to 1 and plot that as a function of V. Okay. So, this is the B value for the LP01 mode as the V number increases and this number actually this starts from 0, I mean the, it, there is no 0 crossing here, uh, it should have actually slightly gone up from here which says that there is no cutoff condition for uh, the fundamental mode. Whereas, for the first modder mode it starts only from 2.4, in fact to be precise this should be 2.4048. Okay. So, if your V is less than 2.4048, you have only the fundamental mode existing in the system. If your V is equal to let us say 2.5 or something, what are the two modes? I have LP11 and LP01 and what are the corresponding B values? I will draw a vertical line here right? and find out this and find out this. These are the B values and so I can find out the beta and beta corresponds to uh, 2 pi by lambda times n effective is what I call effective index of the mode. Right? So, I can find out the effective index of the fundamental mode, I can find out the effective index of 2 pi by lambda of, uh, so th this will give me B, B for the LP01 mode and this will give me B for the LP11 mode, from that I can find out the n effective of the higher order mode. I can find out the n effective of the fundamental mode and obviously that n effective of the higher order mode is somewhere here and n effective of the fundamental mode is going to be somewhere here. It is always larger than that of the higher order mode, okay, where this one is the uh, you know the core index and the cladding index. This would be the n effective of the LP01 mode and this would be the n effective of LP11 mode. All what I am saying is that all what I am saying is that this n effective or your b is a function of v number. So, for instance, if I have uh, v is equal to let us say 4, this number is actually 4, 
okay for a fiber if i have i have v is equal to 4 it means that it can support actually three modes uh, 2 1 1 1 and 0 1 in fact 0 2 comes after 2 1 that depends on how the uh, the points of intersection were right it depends on the nature of the bessel functions right so th this number this line actually represents 1 here because the b should lie always between 0 to 1 okay so b is always within 1 and this one would be the b corresponding to n effective corresponding to the fundamental this is corresponding to the higher order this corresponds to the lp21 mode okay and why can how can v number change if i have a given fiber you know remember this formula 2 pi by lambda in free space this is lambda in free space not lambda in fiber because it is k naught k naught is uh, 2 pi by lambda naught uh, into a is not diameter it is radius root of n 1 square minus n 2 square. So, for a given fiber this is all fixed as I change my wavelength I can change my v number. So, a fiber if it is a single mode fiber or not is decided by the wavelength of propagation. So, whenever somebody says this fiber is single moded you have to ask this question for what wavelength is it single moded. Okay. Typically in a com commercial communication grade fiber we say single mode fiber we just say single mode fiber it actually means that the uh, fiber is single moded at 1550 nanometer. It is also single moded at 1310 nanometer for the two uh, most commonly used wavelengths it is single moded for both these wavelength. Okay. So, for instance uh, the supported modes we have already discussed for v equal to 4 these are the 3 modes. So, the question is can b ever be 1? Uh, b can usually in the, the nature of the solution is such that uh, for the modes that we typically calculate the way the b goes to 1 is somewhere here for a very large v for a very large v for the fundamental mode can go to close to 1. But then if you have a very large v what will also happen is that you know these curves actually get closer and closer for higher order modes which means that you will have so many modes supported in the system. In fact for v much much larger than 1 in fact the number of modes supported is v square by 2. Okay. So, let us say v is equal to 10, 10 is very very large when compared to 1. The number of modes supported is you do not have to do all this because this becomes very complicated the curves becomes very close to each other right and then the number of supported modes is actually 50 modes. Now, when you have 50 modes in a fiber it is no more called as a single mode fiber right there is no relevance for fundamental mode all these modes are usually propagated in the fiber. So, the answer to your question is yes b can get closer to 1 for very large values of uh, v, but in that condition the fundamental mode does not have an independent existence. It is always associated with so many higher order modes. So, you see b equal to 1 gives me a bound here right. So, if I were to find out what is a possible, so if I were to find out ok let us put it this way the solution which is closest to 1 is telling me the feature of the fundamental mode. It is not telling me anything about the higher order modes. The higher order modes is told uh, the feature of the higher order modes is told by b equal to 0. Right? So, the one which is closest to b equal to 1 is telling me how close is the n effective of the fundamental mode is to the uh, core index that is all it is not giving me any maximum maximum number of modes is given by this uh, the condition where b is equal to 0. You can think of a situation where now you can find out what are the fiber parameters for which the fundamental mode has b which is very very close to 1 which means that the effective index of that is very very co close to the core index that can be calculated. So, in a multi mode fiber how many modes are relevant? So, the question is how many modes are relevant for what? If I do a overfill launch 
meaning I am exciting all the modes in a multimode fiber. Okay. Let us say for example, this V is equal to 10, V equal to 10 gave me 50 modes. Each mode and the moment the number of modes goes beyond say 10 or 12 or 15 or something, we actually go back to the ray picture because the wave picture gives me multiple solutions right and what is the intensity at the output it is a superposition of all these uh, field profiles right so it's easier to understand in terms of the ray picture then wave picture does not have any relevance another way of increasing v a large v would mean that the core diameter is large so in a plastic fiber for instance the core diameter was really really large if you calculate the v number of that fiber it would be really large number it must be 50 or 60 or something like that or it can be large when your effective uh, you know your numerical aperture is very large right then it stops following the weakly guided approximation what was a weakly guided approximation where you say that n1 is very close to n2 right and then you know all your solutions that we did becomes invalid because you started with an approximation weakly guiding approximation right so the solution actually becomes invalid so then you follow your ray picture and then what uh, why do we study those modes so we study those modes in a multimode fiber in the context of the delay between the different modes you launch power in all the modes of the fiber are all the modes arriving at the same time or not so that's what our topic of discussion next right intermodal dispersion in that context you will start studying the number of modes there okay can the modes be identified at the output? So, very good question. How do we identify these modes now? How do I know what mode is coming out of the system? So, for that you need to know what are the field profiles of the system. Okay. So, if I have a camera, I image the output of the fiber, uh, I can find the transverse field distribution or a transverse intensity distribution, camera can capture intensity distribution, then I will be able to identify the modes. Okay. So, the question is how do I know what the intensity distribution is supposed to look like. right? So, that is what we need to do next. Uh, so, but then uh, before that uh, let us just reinforce the fact that for 0 to 2.4 there is only one guided mode in the fiber and most of the communication systems use the single mode fiber. So, what is the cutoff condition for a single mode fiber for this we say V C V cutoff is 2.404. It. For any fiber and any wavelength for which this is less than 2.4048, it remains single moded. Uh, for a single mode, the equality should also hold good. For the second mode, you will say it is greater than 0. N1 is 1.454, N2 is 1.45. You see the difference is only 0 0.004, very much suiting the weakly guiding approximation. A is 4.46 micron. So, cutoff condition is 2.4048. Corresponding to this, you have the cutoff wavelength. seems to be around all right, which is equal to 1255 nanometer. What does this physically mean? If I launch light of wavelength 1000 nanometer for instance into this fiber, is it guaranteed to be single moded? If I put 1000 nanometer here, it means that my V for the same values of this is going to be greater than 2.4. So, it is not single moded. Any wavelength which is greater than 1255 nanometer will work as or will be propagated as a single mode. Okay. Any wavelength I can even put may be equal to 1255 nanometer.
In fact, the commercial communication uh, grade fiber has these parameters and its cutoff wavelength is 1255, around 1255 or 1260 nanometer. So, that 1310 nanometer or 1550 nanometer both are propagating as um, single mode. 